At Cramlington, our intranet is central to all of our curriculum developments. Uh, we use it to store all of our resources. Uh, so, for example, all of the students' home learning is online. Um, at post-16 level, students actually have 20% of all of their subjects using online independent resources. So they might have eight 50-minute periods with a teacher and then two timetabled 50-minute periods in a dedicated independent learning centre using online resources and modules of work accessed through our intranet. But the main way you would see our intranet used in, in every single uh, lesson, every single department, um, is through online lesson plans. At the moment, you're looking at our uh, subject menu. And every single subject has their own uh, website. If I click on languages, what you will see is every year group listed and all of the different courses that we teach listed. And if I click on, say, year 10 GCSE, our whole curriculum across every single subject is modularized. So the learning is, is put together into small chunks of information. And students and staff access these modules like this. And then this here is really the focus of everything. We have online linear versions of our planning framework. This is a modified version of the accelerated learning cycle. Uh, we've added a, few, added a few sections to that to, to make it fit in with the way we prefer to teach. And every single subject, every single lesson, every module has these online lesson plans. And if you just look down the left-hand side, you can see Connect the Learning. Um, this is a short two or three minute activity as soon as students walk through the door um, to connect their learning back to the previous lesson, to remind them what it was they were doing last lesson. Then we share with students the big picture. How does this particular chunk of learning fit in with the whole module? Then we have share the learning outcomes. And this is about um, not just content, but also skills and thinking. So some learning outcomes might be to develop your thinking skills. And indeed, every single lesson is audited for Bloom's taxonomy of thinking. So over a range of lessons, we can see we're actually pushing students to higher order thinking skills, not just say low level knowledge or comprehension. As I scroll down, we get to the introduce new information part of the cycle. And if possible, do that through all of the sensors. Then the activity part of the cycle um, do we get students to flex their multiple intelligence muscles? Do we get students to um, do some higher order thinking skills? Is the activity a closed teacher directed activity or an open student centered activity or a student constructed activity? The next part of the cycle is demonstrate your understanding. This is where students show us what they know relating back to the learning outcomes for the lesson. Um, and the final part of the cycle that you would see in, in an actual lesson is the review, debrief, and preview part of the lesson. This is where we review the learning so far um, and debrief, uh, sorry, preview the learning to come. But also in this part of the cycle, we could debrief thinking skills, perhaps. Or if students have been working on group work, we could debrief how that went. Additional sections include assessment for learning and home learning that we've added in. But the reason this online lesson plan has proved so successful with staff is that all of the resources they need are available at the click of a hyperlink and they're embedded within the lesson plan. So here, as students enter the room, the teacher clicks on this and the resource, the visual resource in this case, is available on the interactive whiteboard full screen so all of the students can see it. Then the students have a drag and drop. So here the students come up to the interactive whiteboard drag a word and place it where they think it is. So the interactive resource there on the whiteboard, available at the click of a button. If we want to share with students the learning outcomes, the teacher can easily click on this button and you get the learning outcomes, large text, with a visual image to support the learning outcomes um, there so everybody can see it and all the teachers are essentially seeing the same thing, delivering the, the learning outcomes. In the activity part of the cycle, there are resources for students to use. For example, here the students click on this hyperlink and there is a video for them to watch. And there is video on demand right across the whole school, um, available at the click of a button. 
and it means we're not you know, messing around with videotapes or DVDs. Just the sections of video that we want are available at the click of a button. And all of the resources that you need are embedded there at point of need. So it's really easy for staff uh, and students to use ICT effectively when they need it, rather than booking a special lesson or booking special resources. It's there at point of need. Um, to support this development, obviously this takes quite a lot of work setting up and, and creating all of these resources. We employ five support staff, dedicated support staff. We employ three full-time web developers, a digital video editing technician, and a DTP technician to support this work. And staff can go to them and potentially just say, um, here's my laptop, I've, up I've upgraded module four, could you upload it for me? And the web developers will take it off their laptop load it onto the internet and work that way. At the other end of the scale, some staff might have an idea for a lesson, um, book a session in with a web developer, sit down with them and plan that lesson together. The web developers have lots and lots of experience of um, developing resources and, and actually putting together accelerated learning lesson plans, so they really know um, how effectively how ICT can support the learning process. Um, what you're watching right now, we're using green screen technology to place me onto a virtual background. And this was an idea that the web developers came to us with uh, and worked with the video editing technician. And now we use this type of um, resource to deliver some of our independent learning in the sixth form, for example. So you can get a virtual teacher on the screen. Um, but obviously, as well as support staff um, to help um, teaching staff create these resources, we also try and give as much time as possible for, uh, to teaching staff. So on a Wednesday afternoon, we've reorganised our school week so that students leave us at 2 o'clock and then 2 till 4.15 is staff development time where they develop online resources or we do training to, to, to work out new ways of accessing learning uh, resources. Uh, in addition to that, we have five teacher days every year, which is where the students are actually off-site, they're not with us, um, and teachers are in school and they can get on with planning and we assign as many of those days as possible just solely to the development of our online curriculum. So we've tried to support staff, uh, teaching staff with time, but also with uh, other professionals to help them develop these resources. And, and that's working very, very well. Even staff who don't know how to do video editing, they don't need to worry about that as such because we have the support staff there to help them. If a teacher doesn't know how to do a drag and drop, th that's okay. We have you know, support staff there who can turn their ideas into online reality. And this has really given staff the confidence to, to develop the resources they want because they know somebody will be able to help them with that and make the learning much more engaging, much more active for the students um, and very, very reliable because it's all online at the click of a button. I do have to point out though that th these online lesson plans are not scripts. Staff don't follow these absolutely religiously. What staff do is go in and look at the lessons that are coming up and personalise them for their students. So sometimes they may not do the connect the learning activity that's online, they may prepare something different and alternative for their particular class or their particular students. Often in lessons you'll see in the, say, the activity section, do this or do this. So th there is differentiation built into lessons it's not just a, a script that you follow religiously. You do have to personalise it and use your professional teaching judgement to make this work for your students.